Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. A um, couple announcements. First off, of course, you have a lab due on Tuesday. Please, 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 please uh, remember that you need to demo that lab before you submit it. Um, I can hang around after class if anybody needs to do a demo, um, if you have it ready to go. Uh, if not, you'll need to hit up uh, TA office hours. Um, I have the exams. I'm not going to pass those back right now. I'm going to turn you loose on some practice problems and then pass them back to you while you are working on those practice problems. And then we'll talk about the exams uh, later on today. I think that's actually about it in terms of announcements. I can't think of anything else that's going on. So, um, cool. Unless there's any questions, let's go ahead and get started on some practice problems. Uh, so, today we're talking about finite state machines. So let's just do a quick little review. Uh, what are the pieces, who can give me a piece, one of the pieces of a finite state machine? If I give you a finite state machine and say, here, here you go, here's a finite state machine, you're going to look at that and be like, oh, it contains such and such, yeah. It contains finite state. It needs states, yes. So that's one piece, yeah. What's the net? What's another one? What's another one? Yeah. Uh, transition. So how do I get from one state to the next? What What do I need to know transitions? What is another piece? Yeah. Inputs, right? And then finally, what else do I have? Yeah. My outputs, right? So four pieces that we need to be concerned about: states, transitions, uh, inputs, and outputs. How do I represent states in a logic circuit? How do I represent states? If I take a finite state machine and I turn it into a circuit, how do I represent states? <coughs> where would I, if I'm looking at a circuit, right, I'm going to point to something and say, that's where the states are. What, what am I going to be pointing at? Yeah. Our register or flip flops, right? Some, some kind of storage. The state is what we're going to be storing. That's going to be the information that we're storing about our particular circuit, right? Um, so that means that even though, you know, when we're writing out our finite state machines, we give our states nice convenient names, but ultimately our states are going to have to be represented by binary values at some point. We're going to have to enumerate them, we're going to have to assign numbers to them. That's actually going to be a topic we're going to talk about in a lot more detail on Tuesday, um, or they're already posted on the videos for Tuesday, actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, and then one of the videos also talks about the process for creating a finite state machine. If I'm creating a finite state machine, what's the first thing I need to do? Yeah. Right. You really need to understand the behavior first and foremost. So describe it in a few sentences or a paragraph, right? Just, just write it out in English. That's what's easiest for us to understand, right? Uh, so understand the behavior. Then what do you try to do? What's next? <clears throat> no? Nobody? I know you know. Nobody else? Yeah. Uh, so we need to figure out our state. How do I figure out states? What, what determines when I need a state versus when I don't need a state? That's actually one of the tricky parts, right? How do I determine when I need a state or not? Anybody? What is it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so when the clock input rises is when we're going to transition from one state to the next, right? So that is a very important piece that we need to talk about. Uh, but how do I know whether something should be a state or not? I look at this, you know, paragraph that I've written, and I need to somehow say, okay, this is ultimately going to turn into eight states. How do I know that I need eight states, or six states, or two states? How do I know? Yeah. Uh, say that one more time. Input output. So input and output also definitely matters, right? Because states are going to dictate what our input and output are. So I mean, I guess we're kind of getting closer and closer. It's sort of a, a conglomeration of lots of things. But a state, if I had to sum it up in a single phrase, is something that we have to remember. If I have to remember something, right? If I have to uh, look back and say, oh, what was that value again? Or what did I do, right? At that point in time. Right? If I have to remember something in a circuit, that becomes a state. Anytime I need to remember something in a circuit. So if you're traveling through a process, right, and you write it out step by step by step by step, then each one of those steps is probably going to become a state in your finite state. Um, so we kind of got off track here with this question. So we find behavior, we find the states. We already talked about the other pieces, right? 
we define the inputs and outputs, and then also the transition uh, between the states. Any general high level questions about prior states before we get into this in more detail problem? Okay, so this first practice problem I expect to go rather quickly, so I'm not going to pass out the exams yet. Uh, we we saw this on the video. If you watched the video, you saw this on the video, right? This is a circuit that is trying to uh, implement the finite state machine that was the subject of many of the videos, right? Um, but there's only two states represented here. This is our output logic. This is our next state logic. But I only have two next state logics. There's actually four that I need. So your first task is going to be Writing out the other two missing states that are part of this circuit. Does that make sense? So there are four states total. You can see the state machine right up there. You can see the transition diagram here as well. Here is how we get to two of those four states, right? I now want you to tell me how the other two states need to look as part of this circuit. Take a few minutes, talk to your neighbors. If you're super stuck, flag me or Elliot down, we'll help you out if you push in the right direction. We'll talk about this in a few minutes. <coughs>
Okay, so let's review what we've got up here. Maybe that'll help us figure out the missing piece. Right. What information do I need to know to determine what state I'm going to move to next? What, what, pieces, what pieces of information do I have to know to determine where I'm going to go? What do I need? If I'm, if I'm looking at a state diagram, right, and I say, I want to know the next state that I'm going to be in, what am I going to look at? Yeah. I'm going to look at my current state and the input. So if I am trying to determine the next state that I'm going to, I need the current state and the input. <coughs> we already talked earlier, right, that um, state is represented by these flip flops. So when choosing the next state, it might be tempting to think that this, this loop around is taking care of the current state information, but that's actually not what's happening here. What part of this circuit is checking the state that we're currently in? What part of this circuit over here is checking the state that we are currently in? Yeah. Uh, it's not the must be. So it's the AND gate. The AND gate is checking the state that we're currently in. Right? So we have down here state equals and then the state name. If that's true, the AND gate will be active. So whatever's flying through will, whatever is coming in will just pass through. If it's false, the AND gate will be off. So it doesn't matter what it is. Right? And because there are four states, and I can only be in one state at any given point in time, right? I know that of the four AND gates that I'm going to need, only one of them will ever be active. Only one will ever be active at any given point. So then what do the MUXs represent? What are the MUXs taking care of for us? The inputs. The MUXs are handling the inputs. So has anybody determined the relationship between how many MUXs you need or, you know, Figured out how to tell how many muxes you actually need to get the job done. So I see I need two muxes, but I'm in the state of idle zero. I need only one mux to get through the state of busy zero. How do I know that I need fewer muxes? What are the mux? How many muxes do I need? What is that dependent on? Yeah. Right, so it depends on the transition. Specifically, it depends on the number of transitions. Right? It depends on how many transitions I have from each particular state. If I look at state busy zero, there are only two transitions out of busy zero. There's only two possible transitions out of busy zero. Here is one transition, right? Here's another transition. If I look at idle zero, I have three possible transitions. Right? So I need an extra multiplexer to accommodate that third transition that I have to make. What does it mean if if the state is looping back around into one of these multiplexers, what is that in our finite state chain? What does that represent? Yeah, when your state, <coughs> when your state doesn't change, or it, re it represents that self transition, that transition that just goes back to itself, right? If I see this looping to the inputs of a mux, that means that it, I can self loop. That won't always be the case, right? That may not always be the case. But in, in this particular example, it is. It is the case. How many flip-flops do I have here? That seems like a trick question. I think it kind of is. How many flip-flops do I have there? You're looking at me like, there's one, you idiot. But that's not true, actually. Yeah. Uh, so it's not three. It's not one either. Split the difference and we have two. It will actually be two. Why is it two though? Why is it two? It's a register, right? And actually, I, I suppose I shouldn't say definitively that there are two. Uh, on Thursday, we'll, or not Thursday, it is Thursday. On Tuesday, we'll see that there's actually two answers to that question. I could use either two flip flops here. Or I could use four flip flops here. But there's definitely more than one. We'll talk about why there might be two or four um, on Tuesday, or you can go watch the videos on uh, state encoding to determine why there is more than one here. Another giveaway, you see slash n. I can't represent the state with one bit. One bit can only tell me two things, right? on or off. I need to represent four things. I need to represent four. 
I can't use one bit to represent four different things. I have to use at least two, at least two bits to represent four different things. So at a minimum, there are two flip-flops here. I need two bits to represent the space of this particular finite state. Um, okay. And then over here, I guess we should talk a little bit about the output logic, even though it's not technically part of this question. We haven't actually answered the question yet. We're going to do that very soon. Right? What's happening over here with the output logic? What do these mean again? What are these doing? Hello? I'm sorry? They're comparing. They're testing for equality. These are called comparators. We're going to see how to create comparators in uh, probably a week or two. Right? I'll show you how to create your own comparators. It's just testing for equality. If the current state is equal to the state busy zero, whatever that means, right? Then I want this output to be true. If it's not busy zero, then this output will be false. Right? Yes. Then there's a little false. Uh, yeah, so state equals idle zero implies that I've got a comparator there testing the state. Yes. It's not shown on the diagram, mostly because it's a huge diagram. Um, but yes, we're kind of working our way up. Um, there's still a lot of shorthand that we're going to eliminate in the next uh, couple of classes. All right. So let's answer the question at hand. I've got these two states here, right? We've gone over, hopefully, how those states actually work. You see the muxes are handling the inputs, right? The number of muxes depends on how many transitions I have. We talked about the AND gates <coughs> determining the current state, right? So if I want to, if I want to code up for, not code up, if I want to draw a circuit uh, for the state that represents idle one, that's not on here right now, right? Idle one, how many muxes do I need? I need two. I've got three transitions. I'm going to need at least two multiplexers, right? So let's draw it up. Uh, I want to be consistent, so one, zero, one, zero. Right? So what are the inputs to the select bits of these boxes going to be? Anybody figure that part out? Where do I, where do I get that information? If I want to figure out what these are, where do I look? Uh, request one, request zero, right? Yeah, exactly. But um, I mean, do I need to invert them? Are they cool as is? What order do they need to go in? I guess that kind of depends on what I put up here, right? Kind of depends on what's coming through here, right? So these are going to be our inputs: R zero and R one, right? The muxes handle the inputs. The inputs go into the select bit of the muxes. So I mean, I, I guess we could do it either way. If I put, if I just put R zero and R one here. That then tells us what values need to go in to these boxes, right? So R0 and R1, uh, what value goes here in that particular case? The way that I have it set up right now. So what, is this, what does this imply? This input here is going to go through when what is true? When R0 is false and R1 is false, yeah. yeah. So it's your last big part. Right, so R0 is 0, and R1 is also 0. I look at my transition diagram. I see from state idle 1, 0, 0 takes me to state idle 1. Right? So that's my self loop. That's my self transition. So the state that needs to go here is idle 1. Or really, it should, it should be this current state. Right? It should be this wire. Just looking back around. That should be the wire that goes in right here. Right? What about uh, this one? What about this input here? That's the case where R0 is 1 and R1 is 0. So what do I put there? Is he 0? Cool. And then finally, you know, there's only one left. Uh, is he 1? But let's make sure it makes sense, right? If R1 is 1, then it should be busy 1. And we don't care what R0 is in that case, right? R1 is 1, so it doesn't matter what R0 is. We don't care. It doesn't matter. So it's busy 1. Right? So that takes care of the inputs. And then I just need the other piece, which is the current state. That's we said uh, that was represented by an AND gate. Right? So here I'll just say state equals idle 1. 
And we are finished. We are finished with this one. Right? So we could go through a similar process, right? Determine how many muxes you need. Determine what those muxes should be hooked up to. How many muxes do I need for the last one? 51? I just need one. What's what's gonna be the select bit of that mux? R1 is gonna be the select bit of that mux, right? So here's marker is trash. So here it is, right? The select bit is going to be R1. And I can just use the transition diagram, right? If R1 is true, then that's going to be busy 1. Or this is actually my self loop, right? So that's going to be current state, right? If R0 is false, then it looks like we're going to idle 0. My AND gate. State equals uh, what state are we in? Divi one. And we're finished. Right? This is one of the missing states. This is the other missing state. Now we have to hook them into this OR gate right here, right? And then make sure we hook the self loop back in appropriately. But that's it. That's the missing piece. These are the missing pieces of this particular circuit. Are there any questions about that? You're going to get more practice with that in just a bit. Are there any other questions before we move on? Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. Uh, this one is going to take us a while, but I think it's a great problem. So consider a combination lock, one of those with the spinning knob on it, right? I want you to design a finite state machine for a combination lock, right? And I want you to be as specific as you can. When I do a combination lock, I have to spin it to the right first. Right? Is that right, or do you have to spin it to the left first? Spin it to the right first, find the number. You can make the combination whatever you want. Make it 260 or something easy, right? <coughs> like that. Make the combination whatever you want. Spin it to the right first, right? Then we have to spin it back to the left, and we have to pass the first number. Right? So we have to do a full spin before we can go to the second number. And then we go directly to the last number by spinning it to the right. So, you know, think about what we need. In terms of behavior, think about what the inputs and outputs are. are. Define the states, and then code up the transitions. Um, you know, create a circuit for it. If you get that far, we may not get that far. We'll see uh, how long it takes us. While you guys are working on that, I expect that to take you a fair amount of time. I'm going to start passing back the exams. Uh, please, please, please work on this. I know you want to look at your exams. I know you're going to look at the exams. That's fine. Take a few minutes looking at your exams. We're going to talk about the exams. Um, in a little bit, but please work on this. I do want to go through at least part of this problem before you guys leave today. And please, 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 uh, if you have questions about the exam, I do want to answer those, but not right now. Let me say my piece about the exam first to hopefully answer your questions, and then if you have questions about the exam, we can talk about those after class. Right now, if you have questions about this, <coughs> then please feel free to ask those. Please hold any questions you have about the exam until after we talk about it. Um, okay, get busy. All right, this will be fun. No, I don't. I'm just going to have to start calling names. Um, I guess, I don't know, because it would be twice as fast if we both did it, right? Yeah. They're in alphabetical order by last name, so that might help. And actually, be careful, because it's not just exams. I've got their labs and homework here as well. The exam's always in front, so it's always in front, and if there's labs and homework, it's fine. Okay. So this is an objective.
Yes. Do we have to represent like numbers in binary, or can we just say like number one? Yeah, you can say, yeah. I don't care what the numbers are, just do that. Take a shortcut with that. Here, what you got left? Uh, oh, you got a lot left? Or? Yeah. Oh, I put a bunch that aren't here in the room. Oh, okay. They'll be in alphabetical order, right? Yeah. Thank you. 
So they are not here for sure. Right? I guess it doesn't matter if they're not here for anyone. Mm. W X. Okay. Is there anybody who didn't get their stuff back yet? All right. What's your name? I'm sorry. D E D. Here we go. Who's over here, Danita? I think that's what happened. That's okay. Just graded straight and handed back to you as is. Um, there, there are a couple things you should be aware of. Um, problem number seven, I basically regraded entirely myself because I was not happy with how it was graded uh, by the PA. So, um, you know, that one was done by me. Uh, I did also a lot of problem three. Um, that one was also done by me, not because the TA screwed up, just because that was a problem that I did. Uh, and then the rest was probably done by the TA. The regrade policy is as follows. If, if you think something is wrong, if you think something was graded incorrectly, you need to come to myself or one of the TAs. It can be during office hours, doesn't matter when it is, right? You need to show it to them and make your case to the TA why it's wrong. If they agree with you or if, even if they're unsure, right, but they think that there's a, a reasonable chance that you deserve some points back, um, then you need to mark the problems you want regraded on the front of your exam and give it to them. And they will give it to me and I will personally regrade 
any regrades that need to take place, right? But I can't just take them all back and regrade them. That's not, uh, I don't have enough time to do that. We don't have enough time to do that. So we need to filter it through the TAs or myself first. You need to get pre-approved for the regrade, and then I will regrade um, all of them that way. Yes, question. I was getting there, man. Patience. Patience. Uh, I actually don't know what the average was. The median is a little bit more useful. In my opinion, the median was an 84, which means at least half of you got a B or better. Uh, the average is skewed, especially if people do really, really poorly. That pulls the average way down. So I don't even know what the average was. It was near the median, right? Roughly um, in the same ballpark as the median. Uh, so I was pleased overall with how the exams were graded. I liked it uh, with how the exam grades came out, rather. Um, so that's why I didn't feel the need to curve it. I actually hate curving. I think I said that on the first day. I'm not a big fan of curving, so I didn't see a need to do it this time, so I didn't do it. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, the answer key is posted online uh, on the calendar page under today's date. So if you want to take a look at the answer key, uh, just be aware that there are probably um, infinite answers for some of these problems. There are definitely some problems that were fairly open-ended that you could have given lots of answers for. So just because you see something on the answer key does not necessarily mean that's the only thing that I would have accepted, right? Um, if you have any other questions about the exam, I would again ask you to hold those and come see me after class or come see Elliot's uh, at some point in time during office hours, right, or the other TAs during office hours and ask at that point in time. Um, are there any other questions about the exam right now? All right, continue working on this. We are going to talk about this problem in, let's say, five, ten minutes. Right? So keep working on that problem. We'll go over it uh, in a little bit. <coughs>
to uh, start talking about this problem, right? Let's start seeing, let's see if we can start piecing this finite state machine together. So first things first, what are the inputs that this finite state machine is going to need to operate? I realize that there are probably different designs, but yeah. Where do you start the inputs? Where the counter was on the wheel. So if, if you have 60 numbers, right, you have 60 possible inputs, correct? Then you have the range from 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 the first number to the second number, second number to the third number, third number. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. So if the combination is you know two to six zero, then you'd have ranges from two to six, and then from six to zero, six to zero, and then from zero to two. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, let me write down, because I feel like there's going to be lots of ideas, so let me write down these ideas, and um, we will we'll figure out which one we're going to use in just a little bit. So, ranges. Any other ideas for inputs? I mean, it doesn't have to be that way, different way. Can we think of the first, uh, the first character of the is an R as kind of this way you're So, we... Like numbers, Okay. So we have a direction slash uh, value. Okay. Right. So yeah, depending on whether I turn left to get to that value or whether I turn right to get to that value. Yeah. Any other ideas? Yes. I have a tool that where I said the first digit is in the fourth quarter. Uh huh. If you stop on so that there are three numbers. Okay, I see. Okay. And so then if you step on the second number, that'd be zero one. Zero one. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So we've got four bits, right? Uh, one for each digit. Plus uh, direction. Any other options? Yeah. Well, we actually move with the numbers as space, and we had a first switch to the left and right, and then for the that the fact that the digital was the same as any yet, so it was like back to the first switch. So, right on the left. So, we do need to take opening and closing into account. Yes, I agree with you on that one. So, you said, what was the first part of that? The digits themselves? Well, I was just starting with the left. Oh, left and right. 
and right. So direction and open close. I mean, you really just need one bit for that, right? If it's if it's one, it's open. If it's zero, it's closed. Or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, any other suggestions? These are all great. All great. Any other suggestions? Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to choose which one we want to use. Let's talk about outputs first, I guess. Right? What are the outputs to this particular system? This might be a little easier to talk about. What are the outputs? To this? Yeah. Whether it's open or closed, sure. So we also have that as a potential input as well, right? Um, specifically closing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you don't care. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, any other suggestions for output? So, okay, fantastic. Well, we need to make a decision, I guess, as to what we're going to do. I think these are all viable, right? I don't think any one of these is necessarily um, better than the other. However, I think to break this tie, right, I think to help us make this decision, uh, what we can do is talk about the next question, and, and perhaps a bit more specifically say how many states, right? Because I would like to use as few states as possible. So if I can find something that uses as few states as possible, then that's probably the method I want to go with. So how many states did you ultimately end up with? Anybody want to throw their hat in the ring? Yeah. Use four. Four, okay. Anybody beat four? Fourteen. Uh, so we can really only, at this point in time, we can really only track the current state. If we want to track all the states that we've been in, it actually is doable, but it does kind of explode things rather quickly. I agree with that. Um, so four sounds actually a little on the light side to me, although I, I don't know. I'd have to see, I mean, depending on how you implemented it, it seems like it could be a pretty real possibility. Yeah. Um, An if statement in the output. I mean, output is dependent on what? How do I depend the output? What's the output dependent on? I mean, if I'm looking at a finite state machine and I, and I want to say, uh, what's my output right now? Where, where am I going to find that information? In the state. But right in the output. Uh, no. At least not for the state machines that we're talking about right now. Uh, we'll see actually a different kind of state machine on Tuesday. Another question? Seven? Yeah, I think when I did this example earlier, I was in that same ballpark. I had I think half a dozen. Now I'm not saying that's the best way or the, even the only way. It's certainly not the only way, right? Um, but, okay, well, let's, if you got four, that sounds great. Let's try it out. Let's see what you got. Four sounds good. Um, we can always try an alternate method if we want to as well. So which of these input inputs was yours? Was it the direction and the yeah direction value value direction value? So you've got clockwise, counterclockwise, and then you've got one that just represents the number, the actual number on the yeah, dial. Yeah, the current number that you're talking. About. Okay. So what are your four states then? What do the states represent? If you had to call them, you know, give them names. Um, I think number one state, number two state, number three state. Okay, number one, number two, and number three. And then a four state that's your number one pass. Uh, number one pass. Where does that fit in, actually? Like between one and two. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably fits in up here, right? Yeah. Okay, number one pass. So we've got four states, right? Which one are we going to start in? What's our starting state going to be? Well, we start in number one. We start in number one. So this, this doesn't mean we found number one, this means we're looking for number one. Right? We're waiting for number one to happen. Okay, and so we've got inputs, direction, and value. Value is probably going to be, you know, we can represent value as a single bit in this particular case and just say, did we find the correct value or not? Just to keep things simple, right? So that we don't have to worry about finding a 2 or a 7 or a you know, 55 or whatever. So we've got two inputs, right? Direction and value. And let's define these two, right? Direction, a 1 means what? 
clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter. We just need to be consistent. So let's say a 1 means clockwise and a 0 means counterclockwise. And for a value, a 1 means that we found the value we're looking for, a 0 means that we have not yet found the value that we're looking for. Everybody cool? Everybody on the same page so far? Okay. So if that's the case, I like to break it down one state at a time and try to walk through it, you know, in progression. Uh, what transitions <coughs> do I need from my start state? What, what transitions am I going to need? Okay, let's talk about the self transitions first. When am I going to transition back to myself? Yeah. Right, so we do want to go counterclockwise. We want to go counterclockwise first. Let's go clockwise. Oh, okay. So going clockwise will make it stay. So one here, right, is, is clockwise. And then what about the second input? We don't care. So that's just an X, right? We don't <coughs> care what that value is. So if I'm going the wrong direction, it doesn't matter. I'm going to stay right here. Okay? Is there another transition? that needs to go here as well? Another set of inputs? Yeah, zero, zero. So what does zero, zero represent? Going the correct direction, but we haven't found one. Going the correct direction, but we haven't found the value yet. So I've only got four possible combinations, right? How many of those combinations are represented by this transition? Of the four inputs that I have, how many is represented by one x? Two, right? Because this could be a zero or a one. I don't care. This is a third one. So I've really only got one left, which is zero, one. And so I believe that's going to take us here, right? Zero, one. Take us there. So this state represents I need to then do a full loop before I find my second value. I can't just go directly to the second value. I have to do a full, full term. Was there a question in the back? Yeah. yeah. So this state represents I found the first number. Now I need to do the full loop before I can find the second. So let's talk about transitions, right? What transitions do I need for this second state? Any thinkers? I know you. This is your machine, right? So I know, you know, you've got it. Anybody else want to take a stab? What, what these transitions look like? Okay, so if I continue to go in the direction that I was going in, right, then I would need to actually come back here. Does that make sense? So if I find the number and I keep spinning, like I passed it, essentially, then I need to move back to this particular state. Well, you would want to pass it the first time, actually. Well, no. Uh, hang on a second. Let me think about this. Stop on the number and then you pass it by going the opposite. You stop on the number and then you have to reverse direction, right? So I stop on the number and then I immediately start spinning the other way. So if I stop on the number and then I keep going in the same direction, no. Are you counting the clear spins in there? Like are you counting no other spins in there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I, I suppose that's true, but I've never seen a combo lock where you hit the first number and then you keep going. You always reverse direction back to get the first number. That's, that's every one that I've ever heard of. You hit the first number and then you immediately start moving the opposite direction. So if I hit the first number and I keep moving in this direction, right, then I need to bump back to where I was before. So direction is this first bit. So if I keep, if I still see a zero here, then I need to back up, right? I'm going the wrong way. Do I care what the second bit is? Does that matter? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to us. Not matter. Does that make sense? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. So what other transitions do I need here? What other transitions do I need? I'm going to need at least one to a different state, right? I need one that's going to move me <coughs> forward. So what's going to move me in the right direction? Yeah. Uh, I've only got two bits. One. 
So one is, this one's the direction, right? This one is, did we find the value that we're looking for? The value that we're looking for in this case is actually the same value that's, that we're looking for here, right? So I think you're right. One, one is going to take me where? Two, yeah. So if I'm spinning in the uh, clockwise direction and I find the value that I want, right, that's going to take me there. Question? Um, okay, I'm when you're doing the attack or the back to one, is it zero and go through the second one? If it's zero and you don't, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, right? So remember that um, we are doing this over time. So this transition will be taken, and then I have to wait another clock cycle before I can reevaluate where I'm currently at. Okay? At least in, as far as my circuit is concerned. So I'm going to take this back, and then I'm going to have to pause at least a little bit. And wait for the next clock cycle to come around, and then, um, you know, if I hit the right value by turning in the right direction, then yes, I would immediately move back to this state. One thing that this I think is missing is the you know the three spins to clear you out. Thing. That's not included on this diagram. That would actually be tough to incorporate if we're doing that we have now. Zero x means if I'm spinning in the wrong direction, right? I don't care if I hit the value or not. If I'm spinning in the wrong direction, I'm I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna have to do the whole thing. If I find the first number and then I keep spinning in the wrong direction, then I need to go back to where I was. Right, that's what that transition. That's what that transition represents. Okay, so let's see. This represents how many of my four inputs? Got four possible. This represents two, right? This one then represents another one, so I've got three. I've got one input left. What about one zero? Where's one zero going to go? Self loop, right? Self loop. One zero means I'm I'm moving in the right direction, but I haven't found what I'm looking for yet. I haven't found that value. I haven't found it. Okay. <coughs> Number two, right? Question or. going and you pass it a second time, that would actually send you back. I think we'll actually account for that in a slightly different way. So we're not quite there yet, but I think that actually will be accounted for if, if I'm thinking about this correctly. We'll talk about that. Remind me again if I, if I forget in a few minutes. Yeah, question. Uh, so the combination lock, you actually don't have to stop, right? You you only stop because you're reversing direction. It doesn't care if you actually stop. The tumbler is mechanical, so as soon as I hit the number, right, it's just done. And then I start spinning the opposite direction. Right? I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait. I guess I have to wait as long as it takes for the tumbler to fall in place, because that is for our purposes instantaneous. Especially since we're talking about circuits. Um, okay, so here I am. This state is representing the case where I'm looking for the second number of the combination, right? So what do I need in terms of transitions for this state? So I, I found the first number, and now I've done the full loop, and I'm looking for the second number. So what do I need to do for this state here? Can you take this? I mean, we can take a look at our possible inputs. There's only four, right? So the direction here should still be 1 if I'm doing things properly. What if it's not 1? What if I'm spinning in the wrong direction? Should go back where? Should go back to the start, right? So the wrong direction in this case is 0. What about the second one? I don't care. I don't care what this is. If I'm going the wrong way, then that's it. I'm done, right? So then I have the other two cases. If I'm going the correct way, but I haven't found the number yet, Right, so that's one zero. Where do I go? Self loop. And if I'm going the correct way and I found the right number, then where do I go? I go back over here. <coughs> this case handles the loop around. This so by the time we get here, I've already done the full spin. 
I'm just looking for the second. Because we pass the first number again. Yeah, exactly. We spin, we keep spinning, and this value bit in, in this in this particular case, the value bit is did we pass the first number again? <coughs> you find the first number, you have to do a full loop, so you find the first number again, and then you go to the second. I think it's both. I think it's both. They're both true, because you're going to pass the second number on the way to the first number again. Yep, we passed the first number. Found the second number, so now we're in this particular state, right? We're in this state. What we're looking for, yes. What are we looking for, right? So, okay, we're, we're now here. We're looking for the third value. What do I need to do? Uh, the direction bit, <coughs> if I'm looking for the next value, should be a zero. That would be the proper direction, right? So if it's a one, then where am I going to head? If I have the direction bit, which is a one. I'm going to go back to the beginning again, right? That's, that's no good. I'm out of space here. One x. So then I have two other cases. Zero, zero means I haven't found it yet, so what am I going to do? Self loop, cool. And then zero, one means I did find it. What's going to happen there? I'm sorry? We need to open it, right? We need to open the lock. So, right. So output, we haven't talked about the outputs yet, right? Output is dependent on what? State. So what's the output in this? What is our output, I guess, whether it's open or not, right? So if we use 1 for op open and 0 for close, what's the output in this state? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So how can I transition to something that's open? I need another state. I need another state to make that happen. Right? I need another state. So the transition for the correct value, 0, 1, is going to take me to this new state. I'll just call it open, right? The lock is open, and I will say the output is now 1. Yes? Um, okay, so I sort of had a problem with the fact that the second bit is talking about the first Yeah, that's a legitimate problem, right? It's a simplification. If we wanted to represent you know, numbers in binary, we certainly could, but that would make this uh, a lot longer. Well, not numbers in binary, but how important is that, like, represents binary, the first number of happy endings, the second number of happy endings, and the third number of happy endings, how does it continue to I agree with you that it is problematic. However, I think that... Um, it's not that problematic, though, because you just have three different comparators, and your comparator takes in your string, Right. of binary numbers, and if you're in state 1, it compares so, it to your first number, and then you'll yep. return 0, 1. So we kind of have, you know, a finite state machine within a finite state machine here to determine what this bit actually represents, right? Do you see that? Yeah. Yep. Do you see that? So that was an intentional shortcut that we took just to make this one a little easier to talk about. I mean, how would you represent it? What, what's well, your... We had, uh, we had two I see. Well, that would also be perfectly acceptable. I actually like that, uh, perhaps maybe even a little bit better than this one, even though it has a couple extra bits. I like that. I like that suggestion. Um, so you could certainly, uh, you know, extend this to accommodate that without too much trouble. Yes. For this. I mean, for the, we want it to be as general as possible, right? So you put the digits in. I don't really care what the digits are because they're going to be different depending on which lock I'm talking about, right? Uh, so I think whether we found the first digit is a better input than the actual first digit. Okay. But it's, I mean, it's kind of nitpicky. Yeah. Um, I think you can actually do this for cases if you have an input for this kind of direction change rather than um. And that way, when in this area, you have number one, number two, actually. Do you have?
have a direction change. So instead of what direction you're going in, you have a direction change. That's an interesting. Uh, but how would you define initial direction then? Um, the reset state would have itself in the But we don't have a bit that represents right or left anymore. We only have a bit that represents whether you change the direction. Okay, so then you could put that in. Yeah. So that one I could buy. That one I could buy. Yeah. We have an additional bit that represents whether we change direction or not. That one I could potentially see happening. Um, we're not quite done with this one yet, honestly. I mean, what are the transitions from this one? <coughs> we don't really have any. In fact, you know, if I wanted to get back to start somehow, what would I need to do? I need, a, I need to close it. So basically, whatever happens here, right, we don't care about. It does not have any effect whatsoever. We don't care. It doesn't matter until we actually close the thing, which would take us <coughs> back here. Yeah. The output is, the, the output is dependent on what state we're in. All of these states, the output is zero. That has to be the case because the lock is closed until we take this final transition. So I cannot indicate that the lock is open unless I have a state to dictate this, this output. Right? Uh, no, how would that work? How would you choose which one you want? Yeah, that's so we will talk about an alternative version of a finite state machine that will kind of answer some of these questions, right? Um, but right now, we we only are able to determine the output based on what state we're in. It's the only tool that we really have available to us. On Thursday, we will talk about an alternative version. Thursday, why do I keep saying Thursday? Yeah. On Tuesday, we will talk about an alternative version of a finite state machine that um, perhaps will make you uh, a little bit happier since uh, most people have suggested that same that same thing. Um, so we didn't get to make a circuit for this. I still think that would be excellent, excellent practice. Or even if you don't want to use this one, right? Uh, use the one that you made. See if you can get the circuit. Spoiler alert: the next lab is going to be basically doing this, right? <coughs> so I'm going to ask you to create a finite state machine and then develop a circuit for it. So it'd uh, be good to get some practice doing that now. Um, if you have any exam questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes uh, and answer those for you. Otherwise, have a great weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah, sure.
So like, yeah. think of the, um, yeah. Actually, so here's what it would really be. You'd have like, this is my input. And then I'd have another input over here that's like, so the number one. It would be one of these one. And then this, would that be input so and it it's basically not really and it with so what you're describing is a separate type of finite state machine if you're saying that this matters towards the output then the output is not only dependent on the state it's also dependent on the inputs and they said asynchronous not so we're going to talk about that on Thursday the answer is yes it would work it would just be a different finite state machine I mean, the reason that our well, is being included, we included the uh, have to move four times in the beginning. It's, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. And so we yeah. had we had to actually say that oh, we were essentially we're all spitting. Spitting. Yeah, we were yeah. 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 calling it uh, yeah. Yeah. chaos. And so all of the all of the all of the head maps are there with the same thing. And then you have to exactly just like go through an individual set of states which retrieve to have this number of times, but no actual change in the other. I understand. Yeah, I, would, I didn't intend for it to be that uh, tedious, but uh, yeah. more practice, right? It's probably my fault. I probably just typoed it. So let me let me just uh, write that down. Where's my red pen? Excuse me. Let me just write that down so that I can uh, double check that for you, and I'll get that fixed uh, probably tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. And uh, where should I pick up the yeah, test from? I'm okay. sorry. To get the test back. Uh, you'll have to get it from my office, office hours. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. sounds good. Thank you. Who's next? What's up? Uh, hey. Uh, I'm just going to take a lot of stuff and try to I might not. Uh, this is a good one. I think this one has more to do with the other one. So it would actually be C or D. Yeah. So they'd have to both be zero. Yeah, they'd have to both be zero for this to be true. Oh. Uh, Right, because an OR is zero zero. Uh, it's zero one one. So for C or D to be equal to zero, they both have to be zero. Okay, oh, yeah, they both have to be zero. Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah, most people, a lot, well, not most, a lot of people made. Yeah. Huh? Like, why? Uh, let's take a look and see. So, it's possible. Some of my TAs got really overzealous with the ink, so it's entirely possible that they were just being you know, too harsh. Um, so, where is oh, these up here? Okay, that's the answer. I like. use a NAND to represent yeah. that. So, this OR gate is definitely a problem. I agree that temp points is harsh. But there are definitely some problems here. Let me do a rephrase one. Okay. Is there any other problems in here? Uh, just, no, just that one. Okay, let me fix that one. I'll take a look at it. Yep. Who's next? So uh, I think I am. Uh, yeah, so let me show you. I don't know, what is exactly the question that I So it's like you go to the board for my computer. And then you want to see all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got minus five. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, what you, you know, you know what I'm mad about? Like so, myself. You would have used the two input mod. I the my stuff can be inverted in the wrong place. Like, like, like I drew a messy circle, and then like need to redraw this. The inversion uh, there, not there. Yeah. That is a point. Because because it's right. This one. This one's correct. Yeah, I think I. That's neither the option. Oh, I see. 
That's yeah. I need to work on being able to draw circles. Yeah. Um, okay. Squared lines help. Like they look, they yeah. look. It looks neater if you, even if you aren't actually arranging it better, it just looks neater if you make everything look better. Uh, you know, if you're not happy with your grade, don't freak out. Just give me a lot. Like, I actually like a lot. A lot of time left. There'll probably be at least you are a star chance. Well, maybe not a huge amount of extra. I'm also sorry. Maybe a little bit extra. So. Fair. I also okay. like this shirt, by the way. I love the shirt. Have you been keeping up with it? It's not time to answer. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fairly. Yeah, I'm not like yeah. on a regular right, basis, yeah. but yeah. I've had a shirt in the past month. Yeah, it's up. So I'm not like the. You're the god of mood and you're the god of the song. You're fighting Roy. Well, yeah. it's. You should catch up. It's going badly. Yeah. Roy is doing very badly here. Yeah. Yeah, Roy, Roy is. The current position is that he's at negative 9 HP. You know, maybe the one, the yeah, yeah. away from dying. I, I, yeah. I actually, do you play more? Uh, not often. Because I'm better than that. I just started playing with, uh, I I know some people who play D&D. I know mean, Marcus Palmer, I know him. But, oh, I know Marcus, yeah. Yeah, but, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, any chance you know Ryan Ward is in the D&D group as well? Or? No, Marcus is in the group. Okay. okay. Uh, I had any yeah. um, so I was just wondering about this as a. Give me one second here, actually. But I'm first still.